Namaste, yogis. Thank you for coming to your mat today. This is going to be an easy 45-minute vinyasa flow suitable for beginners as well as all levels. So begin by coming to a comfortable seated position. Allow your palms to rest at heart center. Allow your eyes to rest closed. Take a few moments here to connect to your breath. Align your shoulders over your hips. Feel your sitting bones press to the earth. And take a moment to set an intention for your practice. Something that will elevate you as you move through your practice and maybe even off the mat. and then release the hands, allow the eyes to open. And for our practice today, you might choose to have a couple of blocks and a strap. Those are optional props for you today. And we're gonna start with some easy side bending. So placing your right hand down onto the mat or onto a block. Reach your left arm up and over. Soften your right shoulder down and away from the ear. Create a lot of space between your left shoulder and ear, allowing that shoulder blade to move down the back. Feel heaviness at the left knee. Press into the right hand to root that right hip down and reach through the left side body. In breath here. And exhale back up through to center. Moving over to the other side. Left hand ground, soften the elbow. Inhale, right arm reaches up and over. Soften both shoulders away from the ear. Tuck the chin slightly to create length in the back of the neck and breathe into the whole right side of the body. Reaching with those fingertips, adding a gentle arc to that top arm. In breath here and exhale, come back through to center. Moving through an easy twist, bringing the right hand to the left knee, bringing the left hand behind and slowly rotating around the spine. Taking a few rounds of breath here into the sides of the waist, into the belly. Good, in breath here and exhale back through to center. Bring the right hand behind, bring the left hand to the right knee. Inhale to get long, exhale, rotating around the spine. Good, one more in breath here. And exhale back through to center. Switching the cross of the legs. Doesn't matter what leg you started with in front, just go ahead and make that switch. Bring the fingertips behind, sit up nice and tall, draw the belly in, exhale, hinge and fold. The fingertips can stay behind or you can walk the hands forward. In breath here and exhale, soften. and then slowly walk the hands back through to center. We're gonna roll over our knees, making our way into neutral table. So however you choose to get there, find yourself in tabletop position with fingers spread wide. Knees come right below the hips, press into the palms. <laughs> in breath here, moving through cat cow, starting with rounding the back up to the sky, tucking the chin into the chest, bringing the gaze between the thighs, pressing the earth away with the hands. And then we'll inhale, reach the heart forward, back of the neck stays long, hip points lift, belly drops. 
And notice the position of the elbows. So the creases of the elbows are going to point to the opposite corners of the top of the mat. So they're not reaching forward and they're not all the way in. They're, they're somewhere in between. Good. Now we'll begin to move with the breath. Inhale here. Exhale, round the back. Let go of the head. Inhale, lifts the heart. Good. Exhale, rounds the back. Two more rounds. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Last one. Inhale, lift. And exhale, round. Coming into neutral table, we're going to reach our right arm up to the sky, pressing into the left palm. And we're going to bring our right arm underneath the left, behind the left wrist, drop down to the right shoulder, tuck the chin, and rest the right temple onto the mat. You can stay right here, or if you'd like, you can extend that left arm up reaching for the sky, leaving it lifted or flipping the palm, bending at the elbow and bringing the hand behind the right waist. Opening through the shoulders. On your next in-breath, reach that left arm up. If it's not already grounded, go ahead and press that hand down. Reach the right arm all the way up, extending towards the sky, and ground the right hand. Coming back into neutral, reach the left arm up. And then exhale, threading the needle on the second side. Arm comes behind the right wrist, tucking the chin, resting the temple. Right hand can stay grounded, or if you'd like, you can reach it up towards the sky, leaving it there, maybe bending at the elbow, reaching the hand behind the waist. Feel that right shoulder reach up towards the sky. Press into the back of the left shoulder, opening across the heart. Really make sure that that chin is tucking into the chest, just so that there's no hyperextension at the back of the neck. Couple more rounds of breath here. And then release the right hand down. Press into that hand. Reach the left arm back up. Full extension. And then hands come back to the earth. Coming back into that neutral table shape, we're going to tuck the right toes. Straighten that leg, keep the toes grounded for a moment, and then lift from that right hamstring. Pull the belly in, and then if you like, extend the left arm. The left arm extension is optional. This will start to fire up the core. Keep the gaze right down below the face on the mat. Keep pressing into that right hand. Keep that forearm active. Crease of the right elbow points to the top left corner of the mat. In breath here, and then exhale, bend the knee into the left elbow, tuck the chin, inhale to extend, exhale, curl it in, inhale to extend, exhale, curl it in, we'll do one more, inhale to extend, exhale, tuck in towards center, and then release the hand, release the knee. Let's take two rounds of cat-cow in between sides. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, rounds the back. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, round the back. Coming back into that neutral table shape, this time tucking the left toe, straightening that leg. Lifting the heel to the height of the hip, and optional, extend the right arm. Taking a few rounds of breath here, firing up the core, pulling those lower ribs back into the belly, supporting the back, supporting the strengthening of the back. In breath here, 
Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knee to nose, elbow to knee. If you're using the arm extension, inhale, lengthen. Exhale to center. Last one, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, back to center. Then lower the hand, lower the knee. Bring the big toes together. Pull the hips back to the heels. Come to rest in child's pose. Child's pose is such a great pose to find rest during any practice. If you find that the breath is getting away from you or you just need a moment to regroup or rest, come to this pose at any time throughout your practice. From here, we're gonna stretch our hands forward, just a little bit forward of our shoulders. Tuck all 10 toes, bend the knees as you reach the hips back for our first downward facing dog of the practice. So it's good to start with bent knees to check in with the spine and the backs of the legs. Press into the heels of the hands so the shoulders are far behind the wrists, allowing yourself to move into the shape of an inverted V. Pull the belly into the ribs. Feel those forearms squeeze toward each other. And if holding downward facing dog for any amount of time is too much, come back to child's pose. And then walk it out a little bit, bending one knee deep and then the other. Lowering the opposite heel. And then from here, inhale forward to plank pose, top of a push-up. Firm the thighs, firm the palms into the earth. In breath here, lower the knees to the mat, pull the hips back to the heels for child's pose. Two rounds of breath here. Then stretch the arms forward, press into the hands, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Keep reaching those hips up high. Feel the inner thighs roll back. Spread the toes wide. Inhale forward to plank pose. This time we're gonna lower to our knees, squeeze the elbows in and lower all the way down onto our bellies. Bring the hands next to the side of the ribs, elbows squeeze in, press into the palms, inhale. Nice baby cobra, pull those lower ribs in. Back of the next day is long. Exhale, lower down. Come to all fours. Bring the big toes together. Pull the hips back. Child's pose. Crawl the hands forward. Tuck the toes. Make your way back to downward facing dog. From here, slowly walk the feet to the top of the mat. Ending up in forward fold. Feet can be hip width apart or a little bit narrower if you'd like, depending on how the back is feeling today. Let go of the head, shake it yes, shake it no, clasp onto opposite elbows, maybe rock from side to side in ragdoll. Fingertips come to shins, inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Root down to rise up, arms extend, palms touch at the top. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step the feet back, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank pose. Lower the knees to the mat, open the heart, squeeze the elbows in and lower all the way down to the belly. Tops of feet press, belly draws in, baby cobra, elbows squeeze in towards the ribs. Exhale, lower down, make your way back to downward facing dog.
One more in-breath here. And then slowly walk yourself to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Press into the feet and reach the arms up overhead. Palms come to touch. Exhale, palms to heart. Lowering the hips to the height of the knees. Chair pose, Ukatasana. We're going to leave our hands at prayer and add a twist. Left elbow crosses to the right knee or right thigh. Reach the heart towards the thumbs. And if this feels a little too deep, bring the left hand to the right thigh and bring the right hand to the right hip. Now we want to sway our left hip back a little bit so that our knees are on the same plane here. Feel the thigh bones reach into the hip sockets. Keep the heart open. In breath here. And then we'll do that on the other side. So right hand to left outer leg or right elbow. And again, wag that right hip back. Bring that thigh bone deep into the hip. Send the weight into the heels. Open the heart towards the hands. Good. One more in-breath here. Then lift those hips and fold back down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, make your way back to downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. We're going to stay either on fingertips or blocks. And keep that left heel lifted. Supported lunge. Heart extends forward. Right hip reaches back in space. Drive the right heel into the mat. One more in-breath, just like this. And then press into the right heel to straighten the right leg. Inhale here. Exhale, bend. Inhale, press to straighten. Exhale, bend the knee. Two more. Inhale, press to straighten. Exhale, bend the right knee. Heart lifts. Good. Press to straighten. And then bend the right knee. Open the heart. Really root into that back ball of foot. Press down. Reach the arms up overhead. And then release the hands to frame the front foot. Step it back, downward facing dog. Hips stay lifted, knees may soften. Forearms continue to squeeze together. And then step that left foot forward. If you're using blocks, bring your blocks beneath your hands. Open the heart. Good, pausing here for a moment. Press into that left heel. Feel the lift of the right leg by reaching the hamstring up. Good. Press into that left heel to straighten the leg. Good, bending that right knee or left knee. Good, press to straighten. Soften the knee forward, open the heart. Two more. Once you've come back into that lunge, charge up that back leg, firm the thigh, inhale, arms rise up, few rounds of breath here, hug those inner thighs together. Modification is hands back to the blocks. And then release the hands, frame that foot, step it back downward facing dog. Inhale forward to plank pose. You can lower the knees to the mat or come down, low push up. Elbows squeeze in, shoulders are free, neck is free, tops of feet push down. Inhale, cobra pose, belly draws in, lower ribs come back into the body. 
and then exhale to child's pose. Arms can lengthen to the front of the mat, or you can bring the arms behind, allow the shoulders to soften. And then reach the arms back out in front if they're not there already. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. And then making your way to the top of the mat. Fingertips to shins, inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, soften and fold. Scoot those big toes together, heels apart just slightly. Lower the hips to the height of the knees. This time, Ukatasana, arms extended. And if the shoulders are tight today, the arms can be wide or bent. Good, one more in-breath here. And then exhale, come to stand, palms at heart. Good, then we're gonna separate our feet just a little bit. Heel in, toe out. Hands can come to hips and begin to lower down. Reach the palms then to the heart. Moving yourself into a squat. So the heels might be lifted. You might choose to place a block beneath your hips, if that makes sense. If that makes it a little bit more comfortable. Allowing those inner thighs, inner groin to open. Keeping the spine as long as possible. Good, one more round of breath here. And then hands to the earth, straighten the legs, straighten out the feet so they're parallel once again. Inhale, fingertips to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Root down to rise, up arms, extend. Exhale, palms to heart. So for our next standing series, you might choose to have a block available to you at each end of the mat. That is optional. So we're going to start by coming to the top of our mat and step our right foot back. Bring your feet to parallel. That means heels out slightly and toes in. Clasp on to opposite elbows. Firm the thighs. Inhale, lifts the heart. Exhale, hinge and fold. Let go of the head. Shake it yes, shake it no. And then situate the weight of the body balanced across the four corners of the feet. So if you feel like your hips are kind of back behind your heels, bring your hip weight forward. And if this position of the arms isn't supporting you here, you can bring your hands to the earth. Then inhale to bring your hands to your hips. So if they're clasped behind, make room to bring the hands to the hips. Press into the feet, squeeze the inner thighs, and come to stand. Turn the right toes out, left toes in slightly. Bring the pelvis to neutral and set your lunge. Right into the foundation for warrior two. Right knee stacks over that right ankle and opens towards the pinky toe. Make sure you can see your right big toe. Lift the right hip up as the left hip drops, bringing that pelvis into neutral. Extend the arms. And it's really important in warrior two that we stay gr grounded and rooted through our center. Sometimes we get a little fierce and we wanna reach forward. What we wanna do is we wanna keep the shoulders over the hips and drop through center, drop through our tail. Extend those arms, soften the face. Then drop the left hand down the back leg or the left leg. Reach that right arm up, keep that lunge set deep. Reach with your fingertips. 
Keep dropping into that lunge. Open that right side body. And then come back to warrior two. Reposition the arms. And then we're going to move into extended side angle. Let's use our thigh as our prop. Bring the forearm to the thigh. Firm that left thigh. Firm that left leg. Root through the outer edges of that foot. And feel the left shoulder opening back before reaching it up over. We want to resist the urge to feel that shoulder dropping down. We want to create openness across the chest. Feel the right ribs open towards the front here. Good. Left fingertips extend. Head is in line. Chin tucks just slightly to keep the back of the neck long. One more in-breath here. Then come back to warrior two. Extend the arms. Joyful warrior once again. Right arm reaches up and over. And then press into that right heel to straighten the right leg. <clears throat> Firm that thigh. And then bring the arms back to a T with both legs straight. Right fingertips reach out as far as you can. Feeling that right hip reach back. And then descend to the fingertips to the shin or to a block. Left arm reaches up. Again, creating that openness across the chest. So the left shoulder stacks above the right. And the arm lifts. Take up as much space as you can. Moving in all directions from the crown of the head to the outer edge of that left foot. From the left fingertips up, rooted into the right fingertips down. Wiggle the toes loose, in breath here. Then soften that right knee, come back into warrior two. Bring the hands to the hips, press into the right heel to straighten the leg, then pivot on that heel to bring the feet back to parallel. Good, firm those quadriceps. This time, we're gonna interlace our fingers behind our back. Now, if you have tight shoulders, you might choose to take the strap and place it between the hands. So best thing about props is they're a great metaphor for tools off the mat. When we bring the strap in between our hands, we wanna make sure that our elbows are facing each other, okay? So the fingers, fingertips are also facing each other just so that our shoulders remain in alignment. I'll demonstrate with the strap. Inhale, lifts the heart. And then exhale, hinging forward, bringing the arms forward, keeping a slight bend of the elbows with the bend working towards each other. So I've actually, so the bend is away from each other, but the creases of the elbows face toward each other. Make sure the shoulders aren't crashing down into the neck. Allow the shoulder blades to move down the back. Couple more rounds of breath here. And then pressing into the soles of the feet, coming back up to stand. If you're using a strap, release the strap. Hands come back to the hips, turn the left toes out. Turn the right toes in slightly. Nice neutral, head down to tail. Soften that left knee. Open the left knee so that you can see that left big toe and lift the left hip up slightly. Good. Engage the quadriceps, float the arms, warrior two. Good. Moving into joyful warrior. This time right hand travels down the right leg, left arm lifts, lunge sets deep. Keep that left knee opening. And keep the, sh the chest lifted and the shoulders softened. In breath here. Exhale back to warrior two. Moving into extended side angle. Left forearm to left thigh. Knee still opens. Right arm reaches up and over. Shoulders lift. Heart opens. Right thigh is firm. Firm. 
Feel a nice long line of energy from the right fingertips all the way down the whole right side body, down to the outer edge of that right foot. Pull the belly in. Make your, back, make your way back to warrior two, then lift extended uh, joyful warrior. Press into the left heel to straighten the left leg, really opening it up. Bring the arms back to a T. Firm the thighs. Make sure that the thighs are engaged so that knee doesn't lock. You want to keep that leg strong. Reach with the fingertips and lower the hand to a block or to your shin. Then reach that right arm up. Feel the left side of the waist and ribs opening. Allow the right shoulder to stack above the left. Tucking the chin slightly, creating length in the back of the neck. Engaging the abdominals. Good. Just another in-breath here. And then exhale, making your way back to warrior two, extending through the fingertips. And then release the hands to frame that front foot. We're going to step that front foot to the left just a bit, pause in our straight leg lunge, and step it back, downward facing dog. And then slowly walk the feet forward to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Bring the hands to the hips. Press into the feet. Come up with straight spine. We're going to add a balance here. Moving right into Vrikshasana tree pose. We're going to start with grounding on the sole of the right foot. Strong right leg. Draw the left knee into the chest. Spread the toes wide on the standing foot, create a lot of space for your foundation. Bring the right hand to the hip, bring the left foot to the inner right thigh or to the inner calf or to a kickstand. So it just depends on how you're doing with balance today and really paying attention to what is gonna make the most sense for your body. Good, palms come to heart. And if you'd like, as you're ready, extend the arms, soften the inner shoulders. Let's stay connected to the breath. One more breath here. And then release the hands, release the legs, shake out that right leg a little bit. Grounding the sole of the left foot. Draw the right knee in. Good. Go ahead and place the sole of the foot on the inner thigh, calf, or ankle. Palms come to heart. And once you've found stability, and usually that's with the breath and any release of gripping, that helps anyway. Go ahead and extend the arms. If you're finding that balance is not your thing today, go ahead and bring your palms back to your heart. Bring your ankle, your heel to your ankle and find that kickstand approach. And close your eyes, come to the breath. One more in breath here. Release the palms, lower the leg, shake the left leg out. Good. And now we're going to um, come all the way down to seated and onto our backs. So go ahead and grab a strap. Soles of the feet on the mat. Knees are bent and draw that right knee into the chest. Flex and point that right foot. Make clockwise rotations with the right ankle. 
Make counterclockwise rotations with the right ankle. And then with your strap, place it around the ball of the right foot as you extend the leg up. Allow the hands to catch each end of the strap and soften the shoulders to the earth. Press the heel up towards the sky, getting right into that calf as well as into the hamstring. And work the leg to straight. So the leg does not need to be vertical, but work the leg to straight. So the leg might be, you know, at 75 degrees or whatever uh, angle, 45 degrees. Allow that leg to be straight. Feel that thigh bone reach into the hip socket. The left leg can be lengthened or the sole of the foot can stay grounded whatever you choose. Then bring both ends of the strap into the right hand. Reach the left arm out to a T, palm facing down onto the earth. And then allow the right leg to open off to the right. Curl the toes back towards the shin. Stay active with your left leg as if your left leg, as long as the um, leg is lengthened, as if it is standing on the earth. If you've chosen to leave the sole of the left foot on the earth, you might find that a nice counterbalance is to roll to the outer edge of the left foot. So. That's a choice for you and different variations that can help with that balance and that groundedness. In breath here. And then exhale back up through to center. We're gonna bring both ends of the strap into the left hand. And we're gonna place the sole of the left foot on the mat just for a moment as we shift our hips over to the right. Now, lengthen that left leg to the front of the mat. Reach the right arm out to a T with the palm facing down and cross the body into a twist, feeling the right shoulder heavy on the earth. And that right leg may not come all the way down. You can always place the leg on a block or let it hover in the air using the strap to support you. Breathe deeply into the sides of the waist, into that outer hip. And feel the top of that right hip lengthen to the front of the mat. In breath here. And then exhale, soften that knee as you bring it up to center, neutralize the hips, draw that right knee in, draw the left knee in. And then take the right ankle on the left thigh, moving into a figure four position. Interlace the hands behind the left thigh or around the left shin. Snuggle the shoulders down, flex through the right foot. This is also known as supine pigeon. It's a really gentle and um, hip opener that you are able to control yourself by how close or far away the legs are from the torso. And then keep that left leg where it is, reach that right foot either to the floor or lengthen it towards the front of the mat, draw the left knee in, point and flex the foot. And then making rotations counterclockwise. We'll start counterclockwise on this side. And then clockwise. And then once again, taking the strap to the ball of the foot and lengthening that leg, finding a vertical position at whatever angle that it's at and using the weight of the arms clasped on either end of the strap to create some opening for the back of the leg.
and then placing both ends of the strap into the left hand. Reach the right arm out to a T, palm facing down. Open that left leg off to the left. And again, if that right leg stays straight, that's great. You can also place the sole of the foot on the mat. Roll to the outer edge of the foot. It's your choice. Curl those left toes towards the shin, keeping that thigh active, resisting locking into that left knee. And then bringing that left leg up through center. Place the sole of the right foot on the mat. Shift those hips to the left by a couple of inches. Re-extend that right leg. Bring both ends of the strap into the right hand. And now crossing the body into our twist. Again, that leg may or may not rest on the ground. The left arm can reach out to the left palm facing down. And scanning the body here, where are you feeling restriction? Where can you soften? Use the power of the exhale to release. Listen deeply to what the body is telling you and then take the appropriate course of action. And then soften that left knee as you come back up through to center. Bring the sole of the right foot in. Neutralize those hips. Cross the left ankle on the right thigh. Moving into that figure four on the second side. Draw that right knee into the chest. Soften the shoulders down. Flex through that left foot. Opening up through the outer hip. Good, one more in-breath here. And then drawing both knees into the chest, taking a moment here to honor the practice. And if you've got a few more minutes, I'd recommend making your way onto your back, extending your arms, extending your legs, and taking a few minutes in Shavasana. If you have allocated 45 minutes for your easy flow practice, then we have come to our the end of our time and come into a comfortable seat. So once in seated, bring your palms to heart center. Take a moment here to thank yourself for coming to your mat. The light in me honors and celebrates the light in you. As you go out into the world, remember to shine. Namaste.